Hey everyone, I'm having technical difficulties. I keep recording it and like I kind of I'm kind of giving up on this like YouTube and phone um, Basically this tutorial was supposed to be mostly about um, breeding traits classification eval and why it's important um, I'll Start from scratch <laughs> um, Basically talking about certain studs. Um, I have some that I'm still working on and then I have some that I have Fully finished I know exactly what they produce and um, I'm gonna share it with you guys um, my suggestion would be to grab a pen and paper because it's some good information um, instead. I'm hoping this one does not like stop working on me because that's happened twice now and I'm gonna cut this one short um, um, horse evaluation and classification, why it matters. Um, I've had so many horses, I tried to keep SS and eval in the classification. As you can see, I had to start this game because I lost all stuff during a move. Um, so I'm just kind of rushing to where I kind of was with my old ones. And, um, um, sorry, I just got like a text message and it just completely threw off like what I was talking about. <laughs> Um, it has a lot to affect, um, if you don't have a horse that's really good in eval, I find, um, they don't breed to their fullest potential, like the full will not be to the full potential of what the stud is. Um, for example, I've had a tender value, um, that I didn't really race and I didn't put in G1s. I just quickly threw them in the, like, in the racing barn and, like, raced them only a couple times and, like, had them out stretched out. For like months so I didn't really have to race um, and then put him in my breeding barn and I think his eval was like a B or a C and uh, his offspring were not like as good quality like he's dominant in like um, speed and um, the foals basically instead of having like the 99 speed they would have like 95 or 94 um, so it dropped a lot um, where I put him in a, a second time around and I made sure he was SSSS classification in eval. Um, and he, um, basically produced a 99 and every horse that I bred him to. Um, so I think it's really important that, um, you ride them to their fullest before you put them in the breeding barn. And you can see I did not do that with some of them. Let's kind of quickly throw them in there. Um, how to have a horse to their fullest. Um, if you look at my Facebook page, you will see I have, um, screenshots of a topic that's actually an, um, online gallop racer. It's like a racing league world. Um, I think it's under tapetalk.com. Um, a lot of people who've played the game for years are on there. Um, a lot of information, a lot of help for any kind of beginner or question that you may have. Um, a lot of informational stuff and um, basically there was people that were talking about um, how a stud is not uh, only at like 88% of its breeding potential um, and basically you have to get the rest of it um, by racing in G1 races like really well um, getting titles with it and like not all of them like just enough um, and speed um, speed rating um, you have to have like 140 I believe or above um, which is pretty difficult to do. And, um, I mean, G, uh, GWS helps as well, um, in getting a better eval. Um, I had, um, a couple studs in here, actually. I had one in here that was SS evaluation, SS, um, classification that I got rid of because I just don't like his offspring very well. Um, and that was Vast Delight. In which I will be talking about him as well. Um, I think I have him in the Hall of Fame so I can show you guys his stats while I talk about what he is dominant in and recess of him. Um, mayors. Mayors, um, I basically classify as being fillers. Um, and that's because they don't really have anything that they're dominant in. Um, basically what you get is uh, the stud will have things that's dominant in and that's what that foal will have. That's what he's dominant in. And anything that he's recessive in is what um, they'll get for a trait for their mother. Um, that's what they get from their mom. So you want to make sure whatever a stud is recessive in, you want to make sure it's really like a really good stat and like on the mom's side. 
that's how you get some really good folds. And um, it gets a little trickier once you get to like um, a longer um, family list, like um, generations, um, because then you have like stats that will like appear on a horse that like the mare and the stud both don't have and you're kind of like confused and then you look back and like the mare's mare will have it so um that gets a little trickier and that's when you want to like write down not only your studs but he's dominant and recessive in but that's when you gotta start logging the mares as well um to know what they throw because like it might be something that the studs were recessive in and then like the mare's supposed to fill it and like the mare could be like SS and like response and then like for some reason the full ended up with like a C and you're like what the hell like what the heck like why does it have that it shouldn't have that um and usually it's because um one of the parents in the past had it and it's something that it's going to pass on and which makes it difficult so the first source we're going to start with is warm star um basically as you see it he um produces a carbon copy of himself and legit carbon copy um they look like him and he um, produces most of his stats actually um only a couple things are really different um he does produce which i really dislike it um is summer no go every horse i've had from him has that and deciliate um i don't really pay too much like attention to abilities and like the course distance and leg um i focus more on like the actual like traits as in like speed, stamina, break, temp, and all those. Um, what he does not pass on, um, he does not pass on stamina. So when you pick a mare to go with him, you want to make sure they are good in stamina. Um, so that brings up that full stat compared to the parents. You want something that's going to be better than the parents. That's the whole point of like breeding. Um, speed stay are both like mixed between the parents. Um, you will have that. Um, Basically, if you have a mare that's like a bee in speed and stay and you breed them, breed them to this one, you're going to have lower stats. You want to make sure that that mare is going to be really good in speed and stay so it either brings it up or keeps it the same. Um, so that's really it for him. I will show you actually one of his offspring, um, which is a spit and image, and um, you'll see that they have a lot of stats in, stats in common. Um... I am glad I kind of figured him out. He was pretty easy to figure out because he's basically a carbon copy of himself. Um, and his offspring, one of them I have in here, is Wild Wind. As you can see, I mean, he has a blaze, but he's just got like the same color. Um, his valve was a little bit lower because I kind of quickly raced him. Um, as you can see, the mare was better in speed. Um, she had the same stay as him as well. Um, and stamina she had, which was the same as well. And you can see everything else he passes on. And unfortunately, feel and toughness is something he passes on. So he's going to pass on negative traits, as you can see. Oh, I went too far. Um, as you can see, feel and toughness. Um, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Okay, there he is. Okay. Um, yeah. And he is out of Great Spring, which is one of my great starting mares. Absolutely love her. Uh, Harfoot Delight I've always started with as like a starting pedigree. Um, Eager Singer was a horse I actually tried out. She was like really low class, but I wanted to see what the company she would be. And it was obviously great because I kept her as a mare. I'm very picky on my mares. Very picky. Um, if they don't meet to my qualities, I will get them. Next horse we're going to talk about is Endless Libra. And I think I went by him because that's him right there. Endless Libra. I am still working on him. He is not finished. Um, basically what I have so far for him, as you can tell, I have some that are in the baby barn right now for him. Um, I only got a couple, like three, and one of them is a late growth, which I'm happy about. Um, so I can't really go off of that one because I wait till they're at their full peak before I even start logging what they have for traits because I want to make sure that they're at their full potential. Um, traits that he does not pass on is stamina, temper temperature, Jesus, um, <laughs> temperament, toughness, heart, feel, and power. Those are something he does not pass on. Those are all the mares. Stamina, temperature, temperature, 
Um, <laughs> temperament, toughness, um, heart, feel, and power. That's the mayor. Um, as you can see, um, thank God with some of those because you got feel and temp that are like crappy. Um, stamina as well, that's crappy. So if you've got a mare that's really good in all those, you'll have a really nice horse. You can have some really good offspring off of him if you know, if you have the right mare to breed him too. Um, so basically what he passes on is speed, speed, stay, and uh, response and break. And which all those are SS's, so that's like really good. So he doesn't pass on any bad qualities. None at all, which is awesome. But then again, there's a lot of recessive, which you have to have a really good mare to fill him with. So that's where it gets tricky. Um, my next horse I'm going to talk about that I have done research on, I do not have in the breeding shed anymore. And that is Electric Arrow. I basically got rid of him. I don't think I really liked him. Uh, I wasn't really keen on his offspring when he started out. There was something about him I did not care for. Um, in which I'm actually probably going to get rid of World one too, because I don't, so far, don't care for his offspring either. I just put a well, um, funny attire in there and personal ballot in there as well. Um, and I got J.O. Um, so, off to the Hall of Fame. I'm probably going to do a part two, so I um, don't have to stress too much about um, something happening here. Like it's done to me twice so far. <laughs> oh, where are you? Electric arrow. Here we are. That is his stats. Um, basically, electric arrow. He is dominant in power, which is B. Feel is an A. Temp in A. Heart is an S or an SS. Um, response is an S and tough is an A. I think I said tough earlier, which was supposed to be um, temperament. Um, which are both ace anyways, and you can see that's basically what he has there. Heart, he's in 92, um, which is why I think sometimes, like, I think I have one that's like an S rank, but it's like almost SS, and I think it's because it dropped, because I didn't have him as an SSSS classification and evaluation. Um, but basically, that's what he passes on. He is not dominant in... Speed, stay, or stamina. So if you have a mare, make sure they're good enough. If they're not good enough, that's where they're gonna lack a lot. Which I think maybe that's why I got rid of him because he didn't really pass on what I wanted to. They were all in, in that, and like power, feel, toughness, and temp are all really low. So like, because I didn't have him as a high eval, um, basically those numbers dropped. And if they kept dropping, or if it dropped more than two decimals, it was basically going to put the horse at B. And the whole point is to have um, foals that are better quality than the parents. Now, our next one, which I got rid of him too, which because I don't really care for his offspring. I think I told you guys that. Um, it's Fast Delight. And I do have him in here. Where, oops. Where are you? Right there. I did, um, he's got King and Kings. I made sure he was at top quality too. So I wasn't too happy with him. Um, he passes on stamina, which is an A. Break has an A. Um, feel, um, he passes on, which is B. Um, temperament is an A. Um, heart is an S. Um, response as an A. Um, but, what did I put there? A. Um, he actually, yeah, his is actually lower but all the foals that I've had of him, and it's something that's dominant because the mares do not have it, um, is response. And he produces something that's a higher quality, which is what I talked about with eval and classification. Like he was SS and SS, so he did produce something better in a stat. But I just didn't care for what he had to produce as a dominant trait, which is why I got rid of him. Um, toughness, he produces as well. And that's a, a B. As you can see, I think he's got one, two. He's got two Bs and the rest are all A's. Um, the mares fill in with him. Um, they fill speed, stay, and power. Um, and then I'll show you some offspring. I think I talked about um, Endless Libra. He had a two-year-old um, that I have. 
and that one um, got a title as a two-year-old and why is it not oh whoops wrong line um, got a title as a two-year-old in its second race and um, had um, SS classification like right off which was awesome but she's fast growth in which I don't care for fast growth horses um, so this is her endless design and she does I think have a full sibling, sibling coming um, and then I think in the barn I think I sent a picture earlier today of um, a half one which was out of um, Big Show um, in which if you haven't noticed they all kind of tend to uh, look a lot like Endless Libra this is her stats so far um, if I put them the other way I'll show you more of like what she gets um, and what I still have yet to unlock which is why he's not finished yet I will find out more about him as time comes um, but yeah his her second race um, was the Paris Spring GWS and she um, sweeped that away with like 13 furlongs if she was good um, and she got another world out of it and this is her bloodlines so I put her with them um, or put him with a uh, leaguer by design um, one of my mares um, which I absolutely love as you can see she's out of Great Spring um, which is an awesome horse that I bred together <laughs> with Heartful Delight and one of my test mares um, absolutely like this one. Um, it has a sister and I don't even have anything really unlocked from her and I don't understand why. I absolutely love this guy. I wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of his mom. I got rid of her to fill in, put like open space for the other mares I have in there. Um, I'm pretty sad. Uh, he does have a sibling coming, so I'm hoping that she's going to be just like him. Because I will be putting her in my breed shed if she is. And like I said earlier, my mares have to be phenomenal for me to put them in there. I don't like putting something that's lower standard compared to its parents in the breeding barn. They have to be better. Otherwise, they just get retired and I save them. Um, basically, that's who he's out of. Best bridge. Um, I'm probably going to stop this here. Um, just because I don't want my phone to um, do what it just did. Like the two times I tried doing this. And I want something for you guys to be able to see. So this is going to be part one. And I'm going to have a part two here in just a few minutes. Uh -oh.